SMPHSM Prime Holdings, Inc. Sai Bling's property arm to raise P35 billion from bond sale. SM Prime Holdings Inc. of the Sai family plans to raise up to P35 billion from the offering of fixed rate bonds. The base offer size is P25 billion, but SM Prime reserves the option to issue an additional P10 billion in case of oversubscription. The issue represents the fifth tranche of the company's proposed three year debt securities program of up to P100 billion. SM Prime said the bonds were assigned the highest credit rating of PRSAAA, which suggests that the issue has a strong capacity to meet its financial obligations. SM Prime Holdings is focused on further expanding its presence in the provinces, particularly to cover northern Luzon, Visayas and the progressive cities in Mindanao. SM Prime has 58 malls in the provincial areas and 24 malls in Metro Manila. For this year, SM Prime is set open four new malls in the Philippines and in China. These include SM City Bataan, SM Center San Pedro, SM City Santo Tomas in the Philippines, and a mall in Yangzhou, China. These projects will provide 0.2 million square meters of gross floor R. SM Prime's residential arm SM Development Corp. also plans to expand its operations in the provinces to help bridge the housing gap. With 18 residential developments already in key provincial cities, the company is well positioned to meet the growing demand for housing in these regions. Meg Mega World Corporatio, a slice of Italian luxury in paradise. Andrew Tanai's P2 billion in sales from Mega World's Positano Moctan. Mega World Corporation of Billionario Andrew Tan is set to unveil its latest masterpiece in the heart of the picturesque Moctan Newtown in Lapu Lapu City, Cebu. The Positano Moctan a 17-story Italian-themed residential tower, boasts of 301 feet smart home, units that cater to every type of discerning homeowner, with sizes ranging from studio to three-bedroom lofts, complete with breathtaking views of the surrounding lush greenery and pristine ocean waters. Designed by the illustrious Casas Plus Architects, Inc., Positano Moctan is expected to generate P2 billion in sales and is set to be completed in 2028. The township, which already hosts over 2,000 residential condo units and 81,000 square meters of gross leasable office spaces, will feature two floors of retail area inspired by the vibrant public markets of Positano. It also houses the Newtown School of Excellence, Inc a La Salian supervised institution that offers top-notch education to its students. With a convention center, a museum, and a two-level, beach mall, in the pipeline, the Mokhtan Newtown is set to become an even more sought-after destination, offering visitors a unique blend of luxury living, leisure, and accommodation options. SPNECSP New Energy Corporation Renewables Rising Leandro Laviste shares AC Energy CEO's support as angel investor in Solar Philippines. TechGreener Leandro Levist, a rising star in the renewable energy sector, has revealed that he has received support from Eric Francia, the CEO of AC Energy, an Ayala-owned company. Leviste, who is the son of Senator Lauren Lagarda, posted photos of a recent meeting with Francia, referring to him as an angel investor in his renewable energy startup Solar Philippines. On June 25, 2021, Solar Philippines pledged all of its SPNEC shares to AC Energy as part of a P1 billion loan that was extended by the Ayala unit. This loan is part of a joint venture agreement, in which AC Energy has gained majority control of Levesti's Solar Philippines Power Projects Holdings, which is working on solar projects in central Luzon. With AC Energy's strong commitment to renewable energy, it is possible that a strategic investment in Solar Philippines could be the next step for the company. DD. Double Dragon Properties Corp. Double Dragon raises $20 million via offshore bond sales. Double Dragon Corp. The real estate venture between tycoons Tony Tan Kakshing and Edgar Injip, Sia 2, 
said its overseas subsidiary raised an additional $20 million via bond sale in Singapore. In a stock exchange filing on Thursday, the developer said DDPC Worldwide Private Limited raised the amount though a TAP offering of its outstanding $160 million 7.25% notes due 2025 that are listed on the Singapore Exchange Securities Trading Limited. Use of proceeds intended for the development and construction of Hotel 101 overseas projects and for general corporate purposes, Double Dragon said. This was in line with the broader goal to export the Hotel 10 in the international market. Double Dragon envisions its subsidiary Hotel 101 Global Private Limited to reach 500,000 uniform Hotel 101 room portfolio globally by 2040 and aims to make the homegrown Filipino Hotel 101 brand become one of the top five global hotel groups operating in over 101 countries, Double Dragon said. To date, Double Dragon has completed a portfolio of over 1.2 million square meters of leasable space. Its projects include city mall community centers and office buildings in DD Meridian Park Complex in Bay Area Passe and the 42-story Jollibee Tower in Ortigas Central Business District. It also operates central hub warehouses. Telephone PLDT Inc. PLDT budget overrun reduced to P33B after agreements with vendors. PLDT Inc. on Thursday announced a reduction in its earlier announced budget overrun, as the company entered into settlements with major vendors. In a filing to the local bourse, PLDT said its estimated capital expenditure budget overrun of P48 billion was cut down to P33 billion, net of advances paid to the firm's vendors. The capital expenditure overrun or unexpected incurred budget costs were disclosed late last year, saying that this was caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and emerging competitions. This came as the company completed discussions with major vendors, representing 80% of its outstanding capex commitments as of the end of 2022, resulting in agreements with major vendors this month. Such agreements, PLDT said, effectively reduced its outstanding commitments to the vendors on the acquisition of property and equipment to approximately P33 billion. The company said it plans to engage in similar discussions with non-major vendors to achieve similar results. PLDT Chief Legal Counsel Addy. Marilyn Victorio Aquino, the settlements with the major vendors have been closed, as she said the overruns were synonymous to the carryover of CapEx. For his part, PLDT chairman Manuel Pangilinan welcomed the lower budget overrun, as he expressed relief over the recent development. We're relieved that that is the case, and it's now incumbent upon the management and the board to get back on the saddle and move on, move forward, and demonstrate that despite this big hump on the road, the financial and operating conditions of the company remain strong and robust, he told reporters in Makati City. The company earlier announced that several officials, including Chief Finance Officer Annabel Chua, have been placed on leave, while it conducted its own internal investigation into the matter. Moving forward, Pangalainen said, just be patient. We will address these issues, as he said the status of the executives will be addressed on Friday, March 24. The company reported its full-year telco core income up by 10% to P33.116 billion in 2022, while its net income fell 60% to P10.485 billion from P26.367 billion. Our core business remains to be sound, and continues to show solid EBITDA numbers, PLDT and Smart President and CEO Alfredo Panlilio said with the consolidated EBITDA up 4% to P100.5 billion. We still have one of the highest EBITDA margins in the region, a good indicator of how well the core telco business is performing, he added. Pangalinen said mid-single-digit growth is expected in its revenues and EBITDA for the year. Revenues climbed 6% to P205.245 billion including P82.0 billion from the individual business, P57.4 billion from home, and P47.5 billion from enterprise.
We have an excellent network, strong brands, and attractive products. Wireless is simplifying its portfolio. Home continues to expand beyond connectivity, and enterprise is pursuing its digital transformation initiatives, Panlilio said. PLDT also said it plans to borrow some P19 billion this year, which will be focused on bilateral loans provided to them by its bankers. Val. GMA Integrated News.